The following is a selected video from masterthecontent.com where you will find an extensive video library of lectures for a variety of standardized admission tests. We offer over 600 hours of detailed video lectures for a multitude of standardized tests. Use our interactive in-lecture table of contents to find specific topics of interest. Work through numerous in-lecture examples to help you internalize concepts. To learn more, visit masterthecontent.com. Your career, our passion. The structure uh, of what a protein is like. Before we actually delve into the configuration of amino acids, we're going to pretty much contextualize the importance of amino acids as the most basic units of structure and function in proteins. So, amino acids are the most simple, they're the most basic units of structure in a protein molecule. Okay, so what actually happens is that several individual amino acid units, we refer to them as monomers, will actually come together joined together by means of those peptide links resulting in the formation of a much longer chain a polyamide or a polypeptide which then can undergo additional conformational structural changes so the precise sequence or that exact sequence of amino acids in that polypeptide chain is what we refer to as the primary level of structure that is the primary level of structure in a protein it refers to the exact sequence of amino acids in the polypeptide chain. So why is this so important? You have to remember that the primary structure will pretty much determine the functionality of a protein. And to illustrate my point, I'll just point to uh, uh, mutations. Okay, so the mutation or a genetic mutation that results in the, say the deletion or the inversion of even a single amino acid in a polypeptide chain can actually change the entire functionality uh, of a protein, can make it inactive, can make it uh, do the wrong thing, or can make it not work at all. So the primary structure is of fundamental importance because that specific sequence of amino acids is very important to the functionality of the protein as a whole. So the primary structure, really important. Now, what about the secondary level of organization? And remember, this is just a brief overview. We're gonna delve into uh, these different levels of structure when we actually tackle proteins in the next lecture. So as far as the secondary structure is concerned, it basically refers to the patterns of hydrogen bonds between the amino and carboxyl groups. So I'll direct your attention to the diagram we have at the center of the screen right there. And in a polypeptide chain, what you are going to notice is that we will have these carbonyl groups right here in what we call the backbone or the backbone of the amino acid chain and we'll also have these amino groups right there and actually bonded to hydrogen so what can actually happen in this case is a hydrogen bond can form between this hydrogen atom right here and that oxygen you can form a hydrogen bond between those two atoms and that can actually happen at various different parts within that polypeptide chain Remember, a hydrogen bond is basically a bond that is formed uh, between a proton that is bonded to a highly electronegative element and another highly electronegative element. So this internal hydrogen bonding is what actually gives rise to the secondary level of organization. And it results in the formation of what we refer to as uh, alpha helices and beta pleated sheets, beta sheets. Now, that's, be, that's basically what the secondary level of organization uh, is going to look like. Uh, hydrogen bonding in the backbone of that chain will lead to conformational changes, and specifically the generation of alpha helices and beta pleated sheets that will actually affect the conformation of the structure of that protein. Now, at the TG level of organization, what we have happening is that interactions of the amino acid side chains will actually produce unique or particular conformational changes in the structure of the protein as a whole. Now we're actually talking about these groups right here. Those side groups that can pretty much be largely different. So those side groups in the amino acid chain can actually interact and by means of various forces of attraction, they can actually determine what we refer to as the tertiary, the tertiary level, level of uh, structure in a protein. Wow, difficult word to pronounce. So, the t level of organization actually determines the geometry of a protein. So at this stage, uh, this level of organization is what's going to be responsible for the geometric shape of a protein. So basically, the 
3D or the 3D uh, conformation or the shape of the protein will be determined by the T3 level of organization, T3 level. Now, as far as the quaternary level of structure is concerned, that basically results when you have more than one protein actually coming together, aggregating uh, and conforming together to form another complete functional protein. So what I want to mention in this case is that at any one of these levels of structural organization, you, you might have a completely functional protein, okay? Which is to say that not every single protein has to achieve uh, the quaternary level of organization or structure for it to be a functional protein. You can have functional proteins at these different levels of uh, organization. This was just basically to point out the hierarchy as far as uh, the levels of organization are concerned. So I don't want you to think that the only functional proteins that we have out there are ones that are achieving the quaternary level of organization because we certainly do have much simpler proteins uh, that are either just up to the secondary level of organization or maybe even the tertiary level of organization that carry out pretty complex functions. So that's pretty much it as far as introducing you or contextualizing amino acids and proteins as a whole. Now we're actually going to delve into the meat of our lecture and we're actually going to probe the structure and the stereochemistry of amino acids.